What's up guys and welcome to this new video about state hoisting in Jetpack Compose. This will be the third video of a two video series which will basically cover everything about state management in Jetpack Compose. As I already said, we will start with state hoisting, which is so important in order to use Jetpack Compose the right way. And in the next video, we are then going to talk about state holder classes. So where you actually should put your state in, if a real model is required, if you can manage the state inside the composable, if you need to create another composable, which is responsible for only uh, holding state and all that stuff. I think there won't be any questions left after these two videos. All right, okay, I'm in Android Studio here and I've created also this little example, two composable functions, nothing special here, very, very simple. But before we will talk about state hoisting, we first need to know what stateless and stateful actually is. We have this count composable here, uh, the second composable, which has this counter variable. And this is a mutable state of. So this counter is a state var. This means that this composable, this count composable, is stateful. It contains state, it holds state. And this example screen composable, which invokes the count composable, has no state. It holds no state, so it's stateless. This is these are two very important definitions here: stateful and stateless composables. The main concept behind state hoisting is now to extract the state out of composables which get invoked to the composables caller, so that the invoked composable gets stateless and the caller composable is stateful. To now conform to this protocol, we need to extract the counter state out of the count composable and put it inside our example screen composable because the count composable gets invoked there. The example screen is the caller and the count composable is the composable which gets called. But before we apply this, let's talk about the benefits. And maybe you have already asked yourself, why the heck should I do this? Uh, this is fine so far. If I click on this button, here the counter gets increased and the increased counter is then displayed in this text composable. This all works very fine. Why should I change this? Why should I hoist the state here? And in this example, I agree. This is fine. This works. If you would invoke it and uh, press on the button multiple times, you won't have any state issues there. Everything would work properly. But let's talk about the huge disadvantages when your screens and your composable expand. The first disadvantage would be if you would need the counter somewhere else. If you would have another composable, which also needs this counter, let's just quickly copy and paste this here and call this count composable two. So now you have two composables, which have both the count state, but uh, if you wanna show the same counter, how would you do this like this? So you need to share the state here and this is uh, right now not possible because each state is internally held inside the composable and can be accessed from another composable. So this would be the first problem. Let's remove this count composable again and have a look at the second problem up here in our example screen. Let's imagine we want to show a different button or a different composable if the counter actually increased by 10 or something like this. We want to check uh, if counter is greater than 10 and then we want to show a button which maybe says you have reached the limit or something like this how would you do this because uh, you don't have access to this counter down here you you can't access it and you want to have access to it but in this scenario when the state is internally inside the child composable which gets called this is not possible so this is the second problem all right okay let's talk about the third problem for that we remove this uh, if condition here and we also can copy and paste the counter state up here like this and uh, then we could say something like this counter um, of type int which um, gets in as a parameter here and we can pass the counter variable like this and then we can remove the state and we get a compiler error that a value cannot be reassigned because the parameter gets always passed as a value and maybe we would now do something like this var my counter by remember and then we would say mutable state of counter so that we have state again which we can then increase 
and we can even pass the counter as a key for the remember here so that this always gets triggered when the count composable gets invoked with another counter value. So, and now we can um, uh, make this my counter plus plus to increase it on a button click and we can also um, display my counter as a text. This example works. It will increase the counter properly and also show it properly on the UI. But it works only as long as there's no other composable which also needs to access to this counter and also want to display it. Let's copy and paste this composable like this and call this count composable too. If we would have it like this, then each count composable would have a my counter, which are two different counters then. They would simply increase with this button click two different counters. And uh, they will just show on the text field or on the text display their own counter. And there's no sh shared counter here. Uh, this is not possible with this scenario. This problem demonstrates very well that there's not only state hoisting required when it comes to reading state, it's also required and very important when we want to update state, when we want to write to state, like we do with this counter increase. Let's go up here, and I also forgot to invoke the count composable too. I think uh, this should be fine though. And how can we fix this now? How can we hoist state writing out of our count composables? We can add another parameter here which will be an increase lambda function, which won't take anything and also does not return anything. And up here we can then invoke this lambda function and we can then simply say counter plus plus and the same thing for our composable tool. We will also say counter plus plus, then we can uh, copy and paste this increase down here. And when we click on the button now, we can say increase and invoke this lambda function. And the same thing for our other composable here. And we then can also remove this my counter state variable and take this counter for the text display. The same thing down here. We will take the counter and uh, remove the state variable. So both count composables are now stateless. They don't have state, but they can read the updated stain at any time because up here the count composable and the count composable too always get invoked when the counter actually changes and gets then the most actual, the latest value of the counter and can always display the current one. And also, of course, the hoisted state writing, which happens in this lambda block is also extracted out of our account composables and now in our example screen where it actually belongs to. This leads to two composables which are totally stateless, which are totally reusable and don't have different counter variables. They always have the most recent one and this looks very clean in my opinion. Let's also have a look at a more real world application example where state hoisting is also very powerful. I've also recreated another example here because I think uh, this would be nonsense if I type this off. Let's go quickly over it. It's uh, kind of easy to understand. We have a text field input composable here, which takes the text and a modifier. And then we have the initial text, uh, the internal text, which is a uh, state. So this text composable is stateful. And it also has another state which indicates if the text input is valid or not. And uh, it simply checks if the text field is not empty. Then we have a column with a real text field here. This text field has uh, the text as the value. So our current state because it needs a state value. And if the state value changes, then we get the new value provided here. And we can update the text and we can also check if the input is in, uh, is valid or if it's invalid and also modifier for a little bit of styling here and now we also want to show a text if the input is not valid that there is an invalid input and uh, we will um, show this as a red arrow on the bottom up here we have an example screen which has a column and in this column, our text input field gets invoked. This example screen does not hold any state. It's currently stateless. And the invoked composable is stateful. So there is no state hoisting at all.
Let's imagine this is the initial scenario and everything works. But if you want a little adjustment now, just a little adjustment depending on this state here, then nothing will work anymore. Because if you want to um, check here if the current input is valid like this and show a corresponding button to confirm the input or something like this, then this is not possible because the state is not hoisted the state is inside the call composable and it's handled internally also if you want to access this text if you want to access the uh, text which the user typed in and uh, you can't access it even if you have a button here to confirm the input you can't access the text how would you pass this text to your view model to pr process a login request or something like this and this is so, so bad and so important that uh, state hoisting is handled properly. The problem now in such a case is that there are tons of possibilities to make this work even without state hoisting. For example, you could pass the view model down here, which is so, so bad. You could, could pass the view model down here and say if the input is valid, then uh, you will show a confirm button and uh, invoke the view models uh, login starts then or something like this. This would of course work, but this would make your text input field composable so much bigger. And uh, the text input field composable would also have a, a, an additional button and you would end up with composables that aren't reusable at all. They are not testable. They have inconsistent data and all the problems. And this can all simply be avoided with state hoisting. So let's change this example and apply state hoisting. We will make our example screen composable stateful. We will say var is valid by remember mutable state of and this is false by default. Also we have a var text by remember mutable state of and this is empty by default. In a real project, maybe you have uh, a predefined text or also empty text or maybe also a view model, but let's uh, put the state up here for the sake of simplicity. And then uh, we also need to modify the text input field. We need to um, add the callback function where we actually can change the state because as I already mentioned, state changes, state writing also needs to be hoisted. Let's go down to our text input field and remove the state here. So the text input field is now stateless. We also need to um, provide additional uh, lambda function for the on value change callback. And of course the is valid. So up here we can say is valid of type boolean and on value change which uh, provides a string and returns nothing like this. And then we can simply pass the lambda function uh, we can uh, cut this out and pass the lambda function here and then everything is fine here. Our text input field is now stateless and can be invoked on every position in our screen from everywhere. We can reuse this composable where we need it. We need to just pass an is valid boolean on change lambda block and a text string and of course the modifier if you want some. And then we also need to pass uh, other values here we need to define the um, on value change like this we get the value provided here and we update the text which is defined here and also the is valid state which is defined up here and also we need to pass is valid is equal to is valid and then this should actually work and this text input field can be used everywhere and is totally stateless now everything is so much easier. If we want to show a button, depending on if the text input is valid, we can simply say if is valid, and then we will show the button. And we also have access of the text input um, because it's also defined as the state here and only gets here updated in this on value change lambda block. So we could say something like this view model log in with this text and we would have access to this text. So this makes it so much easier for us if we do proper state hoisting. All right, okay, this was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, you learned something about state hoisting. In the next video, we will have a look at different possibilities to create state. So let's have a look up here. 
if you maybe have asked yourself what this by remember is we can also use the equal sign then we can also have mutable state of mutable list of mutable state list of and all that stuff and when you also ask yourself when should i actually use a view model when should i use another state holder composable class and all that stuff Things will be covered in the next video so there won't be any questions left how to handle and how to place and where to place your state see us then